Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this community briefing on COVID-19 and our local response. Joining me again today is interpreter Francis Beaurevage. Thank you so much, Francis, for joining. And thanks to all of you who are tuning in and learning more about our local situation. We want to remind everyone to please visit our website, covid19.lincoln.ne.gov, where you can continue to access resources and other updates about how to protect yourself, your loved ones, and our community. The website includes a data dashboard that is updated every day around the time of this daily briefing, and you can learn more about our cases and local investigations at that site. Here in Lincoln today, we have had an additional 37 individuals test positive for COVID-19. The total number of lab-confirmed cases in Lincoln now stands at 735. Our total recoveries identified to date is 120. Deaths from COVID-19 among our Lancaster County community members remain at five. And again, we extend our sincerest condolences to the friends and families who've lost their loved ones. On Monday, we introduced the new COVID-19 risk dial on our COVID-19 website. This simple tool helps our residents gauge the actions and behaviors that all of us can take to protect our health and the health of everyone in our community. The COVID risk dial provides a visual color-coded depiction of what phase of the pandemic we are experiencing here in Lincoln and Lancaster County. Red represents the highest risk of COVID-19 spread and green represents the lowest. For each color of risk, we provide specific recommendations for physical distancing, face coverings, hand washing, illness monitoring, and disinfection, both for when all of us are outside of our homes, either at work or in public, and for when we are at home. We will update the dial each Friday based on local data to estimate how high the risk of spread of COVID-19 is locally. The health department team has determined that the risk of spread of COVID-19 remains high, so the COVID dial will stay in orange. However, because most of our indicators have stayed flat uh, with no significant movement and with slight improvement in a few areas, the health department has moved the dial slightly to the left so that now it's in the middle of orange. Small winds mean a lot these days. Interim Health Director Pat Lopez will now provide an update on those indicators and share more about how this determination was made, as well as an update on our case investigations. Thank you, Mayor. The Health Department is using local and regional data from the past few weeks to determine how high the risk of COVID-19 is in our community. Here is an update on the main factors. First, we look at the numbers of COVID-19 cases and at the trend, whether they, they are increasing or decreasing. We have seen an increase in new cases over the past three weeks. In this past full week from Sunday, May 3rd through Saturday, May 9th, we saw the highest number in a week's time with 307 cases. That accounts for four, about 44% of all the positive cases reported to date in Lancaster County. Since Sunday, May 10th, we are still fairly high with 129 new cases. We are determining that this indicator is generally flat with some improvement. We continue to work closely with Public Health Solutions, the Public Health Department in Saline County. On the outbreak at the Smithfield plant at Creek, <clears throat> we began working closely with them. Our contact tracers investigations have now identified 261 Lancaster County residents who are positive cases related to the plant. 160 are employees at the plant and 101 are family members or other direct contacts. The cases related to the Smithfield plant in Crete represent almost 36% of all of the lab confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Lancaster County. There is additional testing underway today for the plant employees in Crete. Our local plants are also seeing a few more cases. Smithfield and Lincoln have 17 positive cases, and Smart Chicken and Waverly has 12 positive cases. We continue to work with these facilities and to provide help to do more testing. Secondly, we look at the positivity rate, the percentage of all tests that are positive. Again, that rate has also been increasing over the past two weeks. This week, the rate has stayed fairly steady with a slight decrease 
from a high of 9.8% down to 9.2% today. As a comparison, the state rate is 17.6% and the national rate is 17%. This indicator is also considered flat. Our third major factor is our testing capacity, and that has improved over the past few weeks. With nearly 3,500 tests completed over the past two weeks alone, we are on pace to do about 1,500 tests this week. Yesterday, Brian Health and CHI St. Elizabeth completed 402 tests at their drive through testing sites and hospital. Test Nebraska is also beginning testing in Lincoln as well. This indicator has shown some improvement, so we are moving it in the right direction with regard to testing capacity. Again, we do have the ability to do more testing. If you have symptoms of COVID-19, you can get a test now. To get started, you can fill out a risk assessment at chihealth.com or brianhealth.com or testnebraska.com. Fourth, we consider the capacity of the health department to conduct the contact tracing investigation. With the addition of the Lincoln Public School nurses, we now have 27 contact tracers. Capacity is sufficient and we have the ability to add more. So this indicator is considered flat. Capacity has kept pace with demand. The fifth major area we consider is the capacity of our hospitals and our entire health system. To determine that, we look at the total number of patients hospitalized, the number that are COVID positive, and the available ICU beds. We have seen an increase in hospital bed usage in Lincoln over the past two weeks. This week has stayed fairly steady with about 40 positive patients being hospitalized and seven to 10 using ventilators. Today, our local hospitals report 36 COVID-19 positive patients. That includes 17 from Lancaster County and 19 from other parts of the state. 10 patients are on a ventilator, and that includes five from Lancaster County and five from other parts of the state. This indicator is also holding steady and considered flat. The orange level community guidance includes the following recommendation. Stay home as much as possible. Stay at least six feet away from others. Wear a face covering every time you're outside the home around others and continue to wash your hands frequently and disinfect highly touched services. The pandemic has upended all of our lives, and in city government, our departments have had many difficult decisions to make. That includes our Parks and Recreation Department. Earlier this week, we confirmed that adult softball leagues will be canceled for this summer. City ball fields will be available to reserve for youth softball and baseball practice starting June 1st. And while those sports have been deemed low risk and are being modified by state measures in order to reduce further risk of spreading COVID-19, there is other summer programming provided by our local parks and recreation department that will need to be curtailed or adjusted in light of the pandemic. Here to discuss changes to our summer operations is department director, Lynn Johnson. Thank you, Mayor, good afternoon. Memorial Day is typically uh, viewed as the beginning of summer and is traditionally the first weekend that the city would be operating uh, our outdoor swimming pools. We've made the decision not to open pools on Saturday, May 23rd to give us additional time to review guidance from the CDC and work with the health department to ensure our operations would provide needed protection during the pandemic. If we are able to determine a safe way to operate pools, we know that we will not open every pool in Lincoln this summer. That means that swim and dive leagues we normally operate will not take place this year. In addition, we know that regional swim meets normally held at Woods Pool will not be hosting those events this year. Um, additionally, at the recommendation of the health department, we have suspended rental of park shelters, both open air and enclosed through the remainder of 2020. Playgrounds in all parks and the spray ground in Traco Park will remain closed until CDC guidance changes. The Prey Building will remain closed at the Pioneers Park Nature Center on weekends. Uh, however, uh, the, the trails at the Pioneers Park Nature Center are open on weekdays and on weekend, weekends. 
We are finalizing plans to open, open restrooms in Pioneers Park and Holmes Park on weekends beginning in early June. Our Parks and Recreation Day Camps will begin modified operations. Uh, our regular day camps at recreation centers will begin operations on Tuesday, May 26th. And the Nature Camp at the Pioneers Park Nature Center will begin operation on June 1st. And I would let everybody know that we do have a few spaces remaining at, at uh, a number of the camp locations. And if people are interested in getting more information about summer day camps, they can contact their local recreation center or the Pioneers Park Nature Center. Uh, there's additional information about facilities that are open and uh, the opportunity to register for day camps at our website at parks.lincoln.ne.gov. I also want to thank all of those who are following the health guidelines while they're enjoying our parks and trails. It's certainly a beautiful spring. Sunken Gardens is being planted. Spring and summer actually are, are, are definitely arriving in Lincoln. We've been able to keep our parks open due to the cooperation of the public, and we do want to say thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, delaying and potentially deciding not to open our city swimming pools uh, this summer is not an easy message to deliver. As we continue to navigate these difficult choices, we are not only considering the health of the public and the constraints of our city budget, uh, but also we're working to minimize any disparate impact that the decision may have on our residents. The goal of our One Lincoln initiative, that every resident has the opportunity to succeed, means that we must always consider who may be uniquely harmed by any cha changes we make to our city services. And it calls on us to find creative ways to ensure that our residents' needs are still being met. For example, we know that our city pools play a critical role in providing the opportunity to gain respite from the summer heat for families who may not have air conditioning. And with our senior centers and libraries closed for the time being, we are thoughtfully considering how we may continue to provide spaces for residents to cool off when fierce summer heat descends upon the capital city this year. We also know that city-operated pools provide access to swimming for those who can't afford to belong to membership-only organizations. As we continue to consider whether or how we might open pools this summer, we will be balancing this concern, the need to protect the health and safety of the public, and of course, our city budget. Uh, even with all the challenges, our health department, our parks and recreation department continue to rise to challenges and find ways to serve our community in meaningful ways. And today we also wanna highlight another city department that works every day to provide services that are also vital for the health, safety, and quality of life that we enjoy here in Lincoln. A normal day for most families involves brushing teeth, flushing toilets, taking showers, then traveling by public transportation, bike or car to work or school on paved streets. We seldom stop to think about the people behind these pieces of infrastructure, the people who make these things work for us. That changes next week. On Monday, we kick off the 60th annual National Public Works Week. It's a time to celebrate and thank the thousands of men and women across the United States who provide and maintain the infrastructure and services known as public works. Our director of Lincoln Transportation and Utilities, Liz Elliott, is here to say a few words about her great team and to give us an update on street construction in Lincoln. Thank you, Mayor. Before becoming LTU director in February, I knew the department was blessed with hardworking and dedicated employees. But in the few months I've had the opportunity to lead this team, I have become even more impressed with these dedicated professionals. Every day, we depend on the transportation and utilities to employees to maintain and provide our water, sewer, streets, traffic operations, stormwater drainage, fleet maintenance, public transit services, recycling, and solid waste collection. Without them, our lives would be very difficult. So the next time you turn on a faucet, travel the paved streets, or are stopped at a red light, think of all of the LTU employees who have served to make these daily occurrences happen. These essential workers continue to keep our lives normal 
on the home front, even during this pandemic. Lincoln on the Move is just one example of how Lincoln Transportation and Utilities continues to work despite the challenges we were all facing right now. Since last fall, the Transportation and Utilities team has been working with the Advisory Committee on Transportation, or the ACT, to define the investment priorities for the Lincoln on the Move program. Together, they determined that the fund should be invested in three areas. 73.5% should be directed to maintaining our existing streets. 25% should be directed to streets supporting new growth within the city. And the 1.5% should be directed to the railroad, transportation, and safety districts, 33rd Street and Cornhusker Highway Project. The transportation team has been engaged and working with ACT to prioritize the projects within these three program areas. The ACT has selected the projects that will be completed in the first couple years of the program. The first arterial streets projects and residential rehab projects have already been designed and are either in the bidding phase or already have begun construction. Detailed information on the schedule of these projects can be found on the city's website at streets.lincoln.ne.gov. On the website, we provide each project's schedule, the status of construction, and any changes in construction limits or budgets. This information is updated regularly to ensure frequent and accurate information is available to the public. As you may expect, COVID-19 has impacted our sales tax revenue. As a result, that has a direct impact on the Lincoln on the Move revenue. In order to determine what that impact is, the transportation team has been working closely with the city finance department to monitor and review sales tax projections. On our website, we show that our what our revenue projections were when the program started and how those projections compare to the revenue that's actually collected. As you can see here, we did better than expected in the fall, which will help to balance the dip in revenue that we expect in this spring sales tax revenue. This means that because of smart planning and strong sales tax collections last fall, we are not anticipating large scale changes to projects or overall accomplishments. We expect that the six year Lincoln on the Move program will still finish strong and generate the expected level of investment that was initially anticipated. Again, you'll find all of the project information on our website at streets.lincoln.ne.gov. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Uh, and now we have some good news to share. This is National Police Week, and today is Peace Officers Memorial Day. I issued a proclamation for this observance, and I urge every resident to join me in thanking law enforcement officers who serve us every day, and to remember those who have made the ultimate sacri sacrifice in their courageous service to others. Memorial Day provides another opportunity later this month to thank heroes among us. Our annual Memorial Day program at the Veterans Memorial, Day Gar Veterans Memorial Garden will not be held this year, but you can still enjoy a pre-recorded program that will be aired on LNK TV on Monday, May 25th. That will include a reading of the names of Lancaster County veterans who have died over the last year. The ceremony will air at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 7 p.m. on Memorial Day on LNK TV, where you can find that on Allo Channel 2, Spectrum Channel 13 and Kinetic Channel 1005. And the ceremony will also be available on demand at lincoln.ne.gov, keyword LNKTV, and on LNKTV's YouTube channel. So really, you have no excuse to miss this. It's on a lot of channels. Um, it will also be shared on the Veterans Memorial Garden's Facebook page. The event is presented 
by the Lincoln Memorial Day Observance Association in cooperation with the Veterans Memorial Garden Advisory Council, and we thank them for their service. We also want to mention that in lieu of community celebrations statewide, the Nebraska Department of Veterans Affairs will present an all-day salute to veterans on Monday, May 25th. NET Television will live stream the observance at the State Capitol Rotunda from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And more information is available at veterans.nebraska.gov. Uh, finally, we have some more news about Lincoln's vibrant and I would say very resilient live music scene. Lincoln Calling's Streamathon begins at 6.30 tonight on three stages, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The virtual festival fundraiser to support local music features 30 artists over three days. Donations will support local musicians as well as the actual festival. The 17th annual Lincoln Calling is being planned for this fall. I encourage you to read L. Kent Wolgamont's article about the Streamathon in the Lincoln Journal Star. And as a Lincoln Calling News release reminds us, we must keep our community thriving through creativity, collaboration, and connection. And jazz fans will also want to catch tonight's lead live online streaming concert. Lincoln's own Jackie Allen and her husband Hans Sturm will present Bass Meets Voice, the Nebraska Project, at 7.30 tonight on the Lead Center's Facebook page. It will be a special evening of jazz straight from their living room into yours. And last but not least, I just wanted to say on a personal note, I made a new friend today via Zoom. His name is Peschel. He's in third grade and he watches these briefings with his mom. So I just wanted to say hello, Peschel, from the briefing room and just express what a nice thing it is that even in this challenging time, we can still make new friends, even if it's virtually. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Any questions from the media today? Yeah, I have one. Chris Dunker from the Journal Star. Hi, Chris. Hi, is the health department tracking the number of confirmed cases in long-term care facilities, assisted living facilities here in the county? I'll bring up Director Lopez to answer that question. Hi, Chris. Uh, yes, we po any any positive case uh, we work on in the community, whether it be at a long-term care assisted living or any other facility, just like any business. Do you have that information? Do we know if there are any cases here and if you know, they're spreading in um, those facilities at this time? Uh, you know, we've had some individual workers uh, who have been positive, and we've had a small number <clears throat> of residents who've been positive just most recently. Can you quantify small number, please? Chris, I, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to answer that. I could give you a number off the top of my head, but I'd rather give you a number. I can follow up with you. Okay, thank you. It's not a large number, and that's uh, why we haven't done a lot of reporting on that. But I'll follow up with you. Have other questions? Hi, Mayor. This is Bill with 1011. Hi, Bill. Hey, any thoughts on a, a timeline for when you would have a definitive answer about city pools? I'll bring... Um, Parks and Rec Director Lynn Johnson back up here. We're certainly, it's a its a top priority right now because we know that families want to be able to try to make plans. But as you know, um, the data shifts day to day and the guidance is being developed um, rapidly. And um, we're consulting, of course, as, as Lynn Johnson mentioned, with CDC uh, guidance. So we're, we're doing our best to get that developed right now. But Lynn can add to that. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would, Bill, I would absolutely agree with what the mayor said. We are working with the health department. We're looking at national guidance right now uh, as to how pools can be safely operated. Uh, we're looking at things like capacity right now and looking at how we would use the COVID dial, uh, perhaps as guidance for occupancy of pools. So we've got some details to work through. Um, there's a budget issue here, I think, that we need to take into consideration as well, as the mayor mentioned. Um, 
Pools do not operate at a net profit, so we know that operational pools in a normal year, uh, we're losing about, or there's a net operating cost of about $200,000 a year to operate Lincoln's nine pools. So part of this conversation is also about, um, given these challenging budget times, what can the city afford right now? And, and those are details we're working through as well. Thank you. Any other questions from the media? Sure, I have another question for uh, Pat. Okay. Is the city received its test Nebraska results back yet? And I don't know if you can share um, you know, what those look like at this point or when you might expect to get them? Uh, Chris, we started receiving some test results back on Tuesday. Um, we've received pr approximately, I'd say, um, I'm adding in my head, uh, we have uh, 39 positive cases and we had, I believe, about approximately 114 negative reports. So every day we're beginning to receive numbers um, of test results back from the testing. And I'm waiting for a number of the state on the total number of tests that have been done. Before you leave, Director Lopez, do you know how long that test Nebraska site will be up and running here in Lincoln? Uh, thanks for that question, Bill. I actually had a call like at 6.30 last night. And I think they will be here through the end of this week. Um, and then the site will rotate to a couple other communities. Uh, but they'll be in Lincoln at least two weeks of, of the month during the next month is the plan. They're going to remain here um, until the end of the month. And then they'll be back and be two weeks of every month in Lincoln for the immediate time frame. Thank you. Uh -huh. There are other questions? All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for helping us to get out vital public health messages. And thank you to the community for everything that you're doing to help protect yourselves, your loved ones, and our community. We'll see you next week.